I recently acquired my very first Amiga, a 500 in working condition but with a defective floppy drive. I replaced it with a convenient GoTech but still wanted to fix the original drive. The menu unit restoration project is covered in the previous video, this one is just to go over the troubleshooting and repair steps of the flop drive, it's an Epson SMD400. Let's first take it apart and remove the floppy enclosure. I'll perform the basic maintenance steps, some IPA on a cotton swab to rub the reed right heads, some grease on the gears and rails. I've also replaced most electrolytic caps just in case. Unfortunately, it wouldn't even spin when I insert a floppy. I then decided to check this tiny double momentary switch, one of the green pin detects if a drive is inserted, the other detects the right protection tab. I've seen this fail over time. Well, a quick continuity test and it turns out we have a problem here, so I'll need to fix this. After popping the enclosure off and retrieving all parts, we need to clean those tiny metal pins that are making the contact. Not sure if you can see, but they're black and corroded. Some very fine sandpaper will work to remove the oxidized layer, and some slider or contact cleaner will prevent corrosion for a few years, hopefully. Time to put it back together. Here we are, we now have a spinning drive. Unfortunately, this is not over yet, it still wouldn't read any floppy. I thought it was an alignment problem. I noticed an offset between top and bottom heads, and I tried to realign them visually the best I could. I managed to capture a nice close-up of the read right head. We can also see the tunnel erase head right here. But no, still no luck, and I realized that not only it's not reading the disc, but it will destroy any disc I'm inserting. I mean, any good floppy Atari, double density, high density, or DOS formatted I insert for 10 seconds will not be recognized by any system after that. Time to go a step deeper and probe some signals on the oscilloscope. I'll start by probing the read head signal. With some jumpers on the back of the unit, we can force continuous reading. Okay, see this? We're expecting some MFM signal, it should look like a random succession of up and down waveforms, but in place we have a flat signal that gets noisy before eventually peaking high. No surprise it wrecks floppies if it sends voltage to the head and magnetizes the track when it's supposed to only read. Also, when plugged on the lab power supply, I notice an unusual idle power consumption, over 300 milliamps. There are two IC on this drive. The one on the top is the controller interfacing with the computer. The second one is located underneath the PCB and is a read-write amplifier. At this point, this is the one I'm suspecting to fail. Another symptom is that the chip is getting alarmingly hot. Time to remove the chip for further testing. I managed to find a datasheet. I'll start by simply powering the chip and just that is drawing way too much current and the chip gets burning hot. We definitely have a faulty component here. Quick jump two weeks later after receiving a brand new old stock IC from eBay and time to solder it back and test it. This is better, standby current is only 20 milliamps. I'll skip the lengthy head calibration process, especially without the special floppies, but we finally got data. I'll store the drive until I can build an external enclosure, but that's another project. Hope you liked this video and as always, thanks for watching.